Hello again and welcome to our worship today. You join me back again in St Mary's Little Birch, again on a chilly day. And we gather for this Sunday, the 10th of January, celebrating the feast of the baptism of Jesus. Which might seem a bit quick, given that only last week we celebrated the Epiphany with the appearance of the Magi um, and Jesus was just a baby. But that's the way the uh, cookie crumbles, as they say, that's the way the... uh, Uh, lectionary works Um, and so our theme then is the theme of baptism so let's begin today with our opening responses O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory blessed are you sovereign God king of the nations to you be praise and glory forever From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our first hymn today then continues our uh, theme with uh, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. Words by J.S.B. Monsell and the tune is a German tune, Was Lebet, from uh, the uh, middle of the uh, 1800s in Germany. Uh, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness, bow down before him, his glory proclaim. Our first reading then today is taken from the book of Acts. The reading is taken from the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, 
Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that, that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn picks up on the theme of the baptism of Jesus with On Jordan's Bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. An Advent hymn often sung at that, in that season but very appropriate for today. Words by uh, C. Coffin, translated by J. Chandler and the tune of course is Winchester New. Our second reading is taken from St Mark's Gospel, and so our Gospel acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 1, beginning at the fourth verse. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt about his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart 
and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Most of us can't remember our baptism because um, we were probably christened or baptised as young children. Uh, maybe, you know, there's some photographs to come somewhere in our, um, our parents' home or perhaps in an attic or whatever of that day with parents and godparents all gathered around, and maybe even the vicar. I know I've been in a lot of photos <laughs> over the years when the christenings that I have done. Um, and it's always an enjoyable thing for me to do. I always do enjoy doing christenings because it's a way of um, marking the arrival of a child. Um, usually, it's, these days, it's a much more social thing. I mean, in, in um, uh, earlier Christian times, um, the baptism of a child would take place within a couple of days of the baby being born, just in case he didn't survive. But these days, it's much more of a, a chance for a, of a party, when we were allowed such things, um, and a chance for people to get together and as a family, um, and perhaps as a wider community, to celebrate the arrival, the birth of this new baby. When we come to um, think about the baptism, though, that takes place in the New Testament, the stories of baptism are very interesting. Some of them are really kind of quite straightforward. So there's a story of Philip um, who meets um, uh, uh, somebody from Ethiopia, um, a, a treasury official from Ethiopia, who has obviously made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem um, and uh, Philip is called by God to go and explain the gospel to him because, uh, uh, you know, that he's got this um, the story of you got the scroll of Isaiah in his, uh, in his uh, you know, that he's bought and is taking back. And, and, you know, there's a kind of conversation takes place and suddenly the, the Ethiopian says, uh, well, what's to stop you being baptised now? Uh, and so he is baptised there by the roadside, that immediate kind of, you know, experience. And in this reading from, the, uh, from Acts, um, Paul um, finds some disciples um, in Ephesus, who have been baptised but have not heard of the Holy Spirit. So they've sort of they've sort of made the first steps on their journey to be um, Christians because they've heard about Jesus and they've obviously recognised that Jesus is an important figure and so they've taken that on um, and, are, and are following the teachings of Jesus. And then Paul baptises them um, saying, we were baptised into the, I'm um, sorry, uh, into whose baptism were you baptised then? Into John's baptism. So, of course, that takes us back, doesn't it, to, to that gospel, the gospel of John baptising um, in the River Jordan to wash away the old and to start anew. And that John's hint of, you know, what comes after about baptism by the Spirit. Um, so we've been baptised with John's baptism, say these followers of Jesus. And then Paul baptises them, he lays hands on them, and the Holy Spirit comes, on, comes, comes upon them and they speak in tongues and prophesy. And for some early churches, that was the sign that you had actually been baptised. Um, it's only later on we get this idea of, of just the, the, the dose, the splashing with water. Um, you know, um, and so when whole households are baptised, and you read about that in the Acts of the Apostles, um, then it's not expected that everybody will speak in tongues, but that, that something will happen, some remarkable change will take place. So that's one of the stories of baptism. There's quite, as I say, there's quite a few scattered through the um, through through the New Testament, um, and well worth um, well worth reflecting on if you get a chance. But when we come to John to to John's baptism um, and and John's baptism of Jesus, then we're back at Mark, Mark's gospel, aren't we? And of course, Mark is the gospel that we're using predominantly this year. Um, and so we go back to suddenly Advent, yeah, because actually we had the first bit of this um, in uh, the second Sunday of Advent, didn't we? When John the Baptist was being recognised in the third Sunday of Advent, we were talking about John the Baptist um, for a couple of weeks there. And now, now we take that story on a section, because that's when Jesus comes to be baptised by John. And there's a bit of a 
kind of toing and froing going on in other gospel stories about this, not in Mark particularly. He doesn't, he doesn't think it's important whether Jesus is baptised by John or not. What he thinks is important is that Jesus is baptised because of what it leads to. And in this case, what it leads to is a recognition in the gospel and by the witnesses who were with John of who Jesus is. Because the recognition is in the upcoming out of the water that Jesus is anointed by the Spirit. And the Spirit descends on him like a dove in, or in the shape of a dove. It's, it's very, the, the Greek is very kind of ambiguous about exactly what kind, but it's the Spirit descends upon Jesus and a voice comes from heaven. Uh, you are my son, the beloved, in you I am well pleased. You, you are now following the path I've laid out for you to the start of your mission. And actually that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because although often families come to us for baptism and we baptise their children and whatever, I, and I keep reminding people this is about a start of a journey. This isn't about, oh, now you're baptised, that's it, you're in. I mean, in one sense you are, because the grace of God is a free gift and all of that. But, but you have to live out your baptism. And that's the challenge. How do we live out our baptism? If, if we are baptised into the faith of our, um, into the faith of our families and into the faith of believing in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, then there has to be fruits of that faith. That's one of the things that Paul's very keen on, isn't it? What are the fruits of the Spirit? Our love, joy, and peace, those kind of things. Are those things shown in our lives? And that's the challenge, I think. When we think about the baptism of Jesus, it takes us back to our baptism. And if we are receiving the Spirit, however we do that, whether it's, you know, and some people will say we must speak in tongues or whatever. Um, I'm, not, I'm not convinced by that at all. It's, it's, it's just a sign of the Spirit. It's not the sign of the Spirit. But actually, it must impact and change our lives because now we have a different set of priorities. Now we have a set of priorities that belong to God and not to this world. And suddenly we are Forced, if that's the right word, we are, um, <laughs> yeah, forced is probably a bit strong in that sense, but actually we have to reckon with a new way of doing things. And that new way of doing things is God's way, not the world's. And what Jesus then goes on to do is to proclaim the kingdom. That's what Jesus does. And hopefully what we are doing in our lives, following our baptism, is to live out the proclamation of the kingdom. That, I think, is a good and appropriate point to finish with. That baptism is the start of the journey and the fruits of that journey need to be seen in our lives so that everybody recognises that we are people of faith, people of God. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is a new one to me, but has some really wonderful words. Let Love Be Found Among Us by Martin Leckerbush, a uh, contemporary hymn writer from Gloucester, and the tune is Thornbury.
So we come to our prayers. Again, we are continuing to think about um, the baptism of Jesus, the family into which we were baptised. And particularly we are praying for those who've been wanting to have their own children baptised, but because of COVID-19, that hasn't been the case. So let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayers to our Heavenly Father. The Magi came from the East to worship your Son. Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. We pray for our brothers and sisters worshipping in different places and in different cultures. We pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon them, that they may be lifted in their worship and know your presence amongst them. We pray that they and we may be sent out into our world in all its difficulties and mess to proclaim the kingdom. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds. As we offer our hearts to you, Lord, so we pray that your spirit of grace will dwell in our hearts. And as we offer our minds, so may your spirit of wisdom dwell in our minds to help us to make sense of our faith and our world. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Father, grant an abundance of peace to your world. We continue to pray for all the places where conflict rages, for the places in the news and the places the news has forgotten. We pray especially for all those who find themselves caught up in conflicts not of their own making. Especially we remember at this time those forced to flee their homes. Those leaving behind family and business, security and hope. As they try and find somewhere where they can make a new life. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer. Especially at this time. We pray for those in hospital, those struggling with COVID-19, and those also perhaps whose treatment has been delayed because of the demand on our hospitals and staff at this time. We pray for all those who are struggling with pain and disability. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. To bring them a sense of you being with them in their time of trial. Lord, in you, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our neighbours, our families and the community of which we are a part. We pray for our own community the village, town, wherever we live, that network of people's relationships, which means so much. And these times of high stress and high strain help us to invest the capital, to keep those re relationships and networks going. Especially we pray for our schools and our secondary schools as they return and all the challenges that they face. We pray that they may find ways in which they can proclaim the kingdom and live out your love. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all the faithful departed. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers. Through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and our collect for this, the feast of the baptism of Christ. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so to the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our final hymn today, then, is a well-known one, Come Down, O Love Divine, written by Bianco de Siena in um, around the um, end of the, 15, uh, end of the 14, uh, 1300s, um, translated by Richard Littledale, and the music is Down Ampney by Ralph Rafe Vaughan Williams. Come down, O Love Divine, seek thou this soul of mine, and visit it with thine own ardour glowing. O Comforter, draw near, within my heart appear, and kindle it thy holy flame bestowing. So we close with our blessing. 
Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for sharing in, your, in our worship today. I do hope you stay safe and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Goodbye.